بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم One arrives at a state of beholdenness when one sees deeply into everything that is given. Being beholden binds one to the giver, leaving one in a state of ecstatic bindingness. The binding can never be whole while one lives, and so one is filled with longing, a longingness that leads once again to the joy of beholdenness. One's work becomes a gift to the giver, made from and of this eternal cycle. Standing under our ancestors, understanding our mothers. It was long after I had children that I learned another meaning of the word to understand. Where there is openness to the need for embodying meaning and essence of a thing, the image of standing under is evoked. With this meaning, I can stand under the greatness of a mother, lay my head on her lap, stand under a tree, a veil of rainwater. I think about her hands all the time, my mother's sandalwood fragrance palms, sliding into supplication, making bread, oiling and plaiting hair, the time it takes to do something, the time it takes to watch, to listen. We are all in the hands of the Divine Mother, once exiled, what is the body but the absence of a mother? And yet, are we not all in one form or another from her form? Now her body, a presence of absence. In the Qur'an, in chapter 19, verse 23, on Mary, Rumi comments in his discourses, the body is like Mary. The 12th century saint Ruzbihan Bakli also comments on the same chapter, verse 16. He recites, and make mention of Mary in the scripture when she withdrew from her people to a chamber looking east. He writes, quote, The true indication here is that the substance, Johar, of Mary is the substance of the primordial nature of human holiness, Fitrat al-Qudus. Buckley continues, and her essence was trained by the real, by the light of intimacy, and in all her breaths she was majduba, irresistibly attracted to God, by the attribute of her closeness and intimacy to the source of divine illumination. We are all connected beyond and deeper than ourselves. The Blessed Virgin, peace be upon her, is referred to in Islam as the mother of the book. 
bearer of the glorious word. An entire chapter is dedicated to her. She is also the only woman in the Quran who is referred to by her name, Maryam. Derivatives. The circle and water are a symbol of the uterus or womb, rahim, a reminder, a symbol of compassionate love or loving compassion, rahim. Quote, then the world gives birth to another world, unquote, Masnawi. The Return Journey More than half of the human body is composed of water. Creation myths evoke the nostalgic reality that we are embodiments of whence we came. Each of us being nurtured and encased in the protective membranous water envelope of our conceptions. These parallels draw significance in the perpetual physical manifestation of our post-womb existence and extend further into the natural world we observe and innately empathize with. One of these natural scenes is the archetypically romanticized but profound movement of the descent of a drop of water upon another body of water. Though the droplet immediately reassimilates, it strikes a silent frequency upon an axis of contact. Realized in the subsequent formation of concentric circles expanding as a reverberative oscillation ad infinitum. Within a body of water constrained by its shores, these reverberations only continue to ripple in outward and inward motions from the point of that initial drop's impact. The polar source being divine and the continual wavering being our own return to our primordial essence, hence the sanctum suspended at our mother's plane of gravity. The womb itself is the destination of our aqueous return, the unrelenting rhythmic memory subconsciously embedded. The umbilical cord is another reminder of that possibility or rather necessity of connection to the origin. It is the root through which the much needed biological and most importantly spiritual nourishment flows. I would like to remind myself here that the word religion derives from the Latin to bind, religio. It is beauty that I am looking for. Mother is the archetypal symbol of beauty. The remembrance of beauty points me to the source. Alchemy from seed to personhood, archetype and transformation. Alchemists called the matter that preceded all other substance, original essence, from which all alchemical transmutation manifested, 
prima materia, primal mother. Quote, the true indication here is that the substance, Johar, of Mary is the substance of the primordial nature of human holiness, Fitrat al Qudus. The practice of geometry or linking repeating patterns is one of the ways that I try to express the need for reconnecting. Sewing and weaving is one of the most profound universal practice methods of a language and symbol of the way that man holds or bonds together one material to another. The significance and use of symbols within a community, migration, the importance of movement, of change, its influence, how a symbol travels with people through time and space. The source. Black is a color that contains all colors. Quintessence, fiveness, point, line, circle, square, dynamic, static, layered and repeated, it forms the cross, an overall creating a breath pattern, referred to also as the breath of the compassionate, eightness, star, dynamic, static, square, exhale, cross, inhalation, a universal pattern found across traditions of spirit, traditions of breath and rhythm. In a space here for art and spirituality, we invoke the spirit and hence the breath. I like to know the derivatives of words. In spiritus, we find the breath, the vessel or container. Inspire, take in, aspire, moving towards. Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Madad, Madad. With an understanding that art making comes with a responsibility. How do we respond amidst this ocean of sorrow that runs across our world? How does one simultaneously recite one's spiritual practice into one's art-making process, intentionally and consciously, making a work that embodies the potential to transcend into a work of beauty? One arrives at a state of beholdenness when one sees deeply into everything that is given. Being beholden binds one to the giver, leaving one in a state of ecstatic bindingness. The binding can never be whole while one lives, and so one is filled with longing, a longingness that leads once again to the joy of beholdenness. One's work becomes a gift to the giver, made from and of this eternal cycle. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.